Today we're gonna to take a look at the cassette interface board that MITS made for this Altair 680 computer. If you haven't watched the early videos in this series, I'd really recommend watching those first. I'm gonna refer back to them a few times and it'll give you some good background for what we're gonna to cover today. To make it easy to find those videos, I've put a link to the playlist in the information below this video. All right, I've already got the cassette interface board installed in this computer. And this is what it looks like right here. This connector right here is where audio in and out come to the board and it runs through these audio cables to this uh, connector panel in the back that's got three and a half millimeter uh, female jacks to allow us to connect this standard audio cable. That audio cable then runs over to our cassette player and it plugs in to where it says uh, record in or microphone or headphone out for playback. Now the Altair uh, cassette interface board, both here and on the Altair 8800, did not work well with both boards installed, excuse me, both cords connected at the same time. So typically you only use one cord at a time and you swap back and forth as you went from save to, re um, save to playback for uh, loading versus saving files. All right, now in addition to that cassette interface board, we also have a memory board installed down here. This is the 16K RAM board. And this would be a fairly typical setup for running Altair's 8K Basic, which was the only version of Basic provided for this machine. Basic itself only took about 7,200 bytes, so it left you eight to nine K of memory uh, available for programs. So that was a pretty good setup in the end. And we are gonna get that uh, 8K Basic up and running later on in this video. Now, as you recall from previous videos, the way we load programs into this computer, like BASIC or the Assembler Editor or even one of our own programs, is to use the L command in the monitor. And that loads a Motorola S record format file through the console serial port, which of course is coming from our teletype in those videos through the paper tape reader. Now this cassette interface, however, is not coming through that console port. It's, entirely, it's an entirely different hardware port or hardware address. And so we're not gonna be able to use the load command. So what was provided with this cassette interface board is another EEPROM that went into one of the spare slots. And when you jump to the start address of that EEPROM, it does the exact same thing as the L command in the uh, monitor, except of course it does it through the cassette interface. Now that load command did not take the entire EEPROM. So in the rest of that space, they put a save command, which if you recall from video number two, was one of my pet peeves about this system is that it had no way to save out to paper tape. You could write a program, uh, hand enter it using the monitor into uh, memory, execute it, debug it, and then you had no way of saving it, which I felt was a huge shortcoming. So with this cassette interface, you can now write small assembly language programs by hand, enter them in the monitor, debug them, and save them. Plus it's much easier to type on the CRT or on a video terminal than it is on a teletype. So now the process of hand assembly, um, entering, entering the data and saving it, isn't so bad. So what I'd like to do first here is go ahead and demonstrate entering the Hello World program we did in the second video. Now, instead of printing Hello World, we have it print Altair 680. We basically hand assembled that to a piece of paper, generated the hex codes that represented that in machine language, which in the 6800 is very easy to do. And then we entered them in the monitor and had our program running. So let's go ahead and start this up. Give it a reset, ready to run. Now we'll come over here to the monitor and run the monitor. Let me get to the right spot here. All right, let's see. Sorry about all the time there. Okay, there's the monitor. So we've got a program to enter. So let's go ahead and type in that care, um, soup, type in the program. We we'll use the monitor's memory command and this program starts at 200. And the first byte of it is a CE. To go to the next address, we hit N for next. And now we can type in the next byte, which is zero two. And now we can proceed and just enter all the program bytes that we had written on our piece of paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that.
Okay, so that's the whole program. You can see that went pretty quick. Let's see if I got it right. We'll jump to the execution address, which is 200, and there's our hello world spitting back at us. All right, so obviously that was a lot easier just be than the teletype, just because the keyboard's a little bit simpler to use. All right, so now we've done this and we want to save it out to tape. How would you do that? Well, I've already got the tape hooked up in a recording format. So you um, also have a save entry point in the prom. The prom is at FD100. The save entry point is at FD74. And here it's prompting for the start address, which is 200. And now it's asking for the end address. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as soon as I type that second or the last digit of the end address in, it's going to start writing. So I'm going to hit record on the cassette over here. So now it's recording a few seconds of idle tone. And now I put in the end address. End, ad end address. So it is now writing that. And when we get our dot prompt back, we'll know it's done. This is a fairly short program. All right, it's done already. So I can stop the cassette player. And that has now been saved. So now what we could do is um, come back the next day and load our program. So let's go ahead and pretend we're doing that. And go ahead and turn the machine off. We're going to move this from record position down into the play position. And then I have to go swap it over on the cassette from microphone to earphone. And then rewind the tape to where we started. All right, well, so that should do it. So now we turn on our computer, hit reset, run. I'm gonna hit play over on the cassette player. And uh, then we'll jump to the load address for cassette, which is FD00. Okay, I've hit play, and we'll jump to FD00. And now it should load our program. Don't recall how long a leader I put in the front, but it shouldn't take long. There we go. So now we just jump to 200 and there's our program. So simple as that, we're able to load and save programs um, without having to worry about using an external computer to generate paper tapes like we did in the um, beginning when we did not have access to a save or a punch command. We're gonna take advantage of this so that we can write some simple assembly language programs to speed up the process of loading basic by a factor of almost three. And we'll get to that right here um, following this. As we've shown in a previous video, the process of loading 8K BASIC into this Altair 680 is a miserably noisy and long process. It takes about 35 minutes. And of course the cassette promises to improve on that because number one it's quiet and number two it runs at a faster baud rate. It runs at 300 baud which theoretically could get us 30 characters per second as, as opposed to the 10 characters per second of the teletype, so three times as fast. Now, for some reason, the consortium that put together the Kansas City uh, cassette standard that Altair and others adopted chose to use two stop bits instead of one. I'm not sure why. I don't, I've never seen a technical reason that would be uh, beneficial. And that slows it down to 27 characters per second, but that's still almost three times as fast, so it's an improvement. So instead of taking 35 minutes, loading BASIC on this as Altair shipped it out takes about uh, a little under 13 minutes, so a good improvement. Um, however, when you're sitting there watching it, 13 minutes still seems like forever. And on your Altair 8800 or your friend's 8800, same size BASIC, same number of bytes approximately, loads in under 5 minutes instead of 13. Um, why the difference? Well, again, just like before, it's because the entire tape is written in Motorola S records. That is a uh, ASCII representation of the binary data. It has almost a three to one overhead. So for example, we're actually loading about 7,200 bytes into memory, and yet the tape is just shy of 20,000 bytes long. So almost three to one. And that is just a big waste of time that isn't necessary. A simple two-stage loader would take care of this problem. Very common solution in computers since the 60s and before. And in fact, the Altair 8800 did it with a two-stage loader. So at the beginning of the tape, we could have a very small program that gets loaded with the ROM and is 10, 15 seconds to load, and it turns around and then loads the rest of the tape using a binary format that's much more space efficient. In fact, we could use the exact same format that Altair used on the 8800 tapes. 
And that's roughly a checksum byte every 256 binary bytes. And so that's what we're going to do in the video today. We're going to show how easy this was to actually implement that. And again, you wonder why on earth MITS didn't just ship it that way. It cost nothing, no new hardware. The only reason I can ever come up with is because they just wanted to make sure this 680 was slow compared to their 8800 at the expense of the customer. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, so what we'll have to do is write a small program that loads the binary format off of this tape. Then it's a very simple program to write. It's something we can write by hand, hand assemble it into machine language and key in those bytes in the monitor just like we did in the first part of this video. And again, we can now save that out to tape. So I've already done that. Um, we're also gonna need a program to write out basic to the tape for the first time. That's basically the same program as the load, just reversing the direction of your saves, of course. So that's very easy to write. In fact, it can almost just be patched into the first one. Um, so I put that into memory as well and wrote it out to a tape. Now the load routine I put up at 3F100, that's at the top of the 16K board, well out of the way of uh, basic. Basic's down at zero through about 1C100. Um, I put the writing program, the one that writes out basic in the binary format at 3E100, just below the other one. So I can have it all in memory and, and debug it and test it. All right, and in this computer, I've already got that all set up. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what it was like to write this tape. So the first thing we want to write to tape is an S record version of our little load program. And again, we can jump to a entry point in the prom to write that out to the tape. So that's what I'll do first. And then I'll immediately turn around and jump to the program we wrote to write the binary format of basic out. It's at 3E100, so I'll jump to that after giving four or five seconds of time in between, because when we load this tape, you'll see that we have to jump to the loader once it gets loaded to then load the rest of the tape. Very simple, but you'll see that in just a second. I've also loaded basic into memory now um, from cassette tape and went through the 13 minutes, so it's all in memory ready to be written out. So let's go ahead and start this pro process. So let's write out the first part of the tape, which is the first stage loader, a little program. So we jump to FD74. It wants the start address, which is at 3F100. And the end address is at 3F F6, excuse me, 3F66. And as soon as I hit that last six, it's gonna start writing. So I'm gonna hit record over here. Give it a little bit of time. All right, and so now the uh, prom is writing this out in S record format to tape for us. And this shouldn't take long. Now, as soon as that's done, I'm going to jump to 3E100 to write out basic um, so that it's all one nice continuous tape. Okay, that's done. So we're going to jump to 3E100, and I've already got the values in here to write it um, the exact start and end address of basic. That gave it some space in between those two. Gave us, that'll give us time to turn around and jump to 3F100 when we're loading it. Now, I've always been frustrated by the fact that none of the load processes in Altair give you any feedback as to what's going on. So I've decided to add some feedback into my save routine and into the load routine. Every time it writes out a uh, page of binary data, it's telling me what address is, uh, that page is at. Uh, we start at zero, so everything's gonna be on a 256 byte boundary. But this will give us a good idea of progress as we go along. All right, so this um, is gonna go all the way up through just over 1C100. And so we've got a ways to go here, as you can see. So I'm going to do a video cut and come back when this is almost done. All right, so as you can see, we went all the way up through 1C100 and it completed. Then at that point, I went ahead and demonstrated that I turned off the computer, swapped the cables to playback, turned it back on and came in here and showed you how it was going to now load basic. But I forgot to rewind the tape. So since then, I have now rewinded the tape and I've rebooted the computer and we're good to go here um, in the monitor. So I'm gonna hit play on the tape and I will jump to the cassette prom. This is now doing a load of whatever's on tape in S record format. And this is the small first stage loader that we wrote. Um, a lot of this is just leader time and then it takes about 10 or 15 seconds to load the actual first stage loader. Once it's loaded, I just jump to it at 3F100, and then it will run and load the rest of the tape, which is in binary format. All right, so now I just jumped to 3F100, and now the binary loader is running, and as soon as it gets to the first data page off of the, the 
off of tape. Yep, you'll see it. There it is. So now it's loading zero. About nine seconds or so per page, you'll see it, the 100 come up as it loads. So at this point, our binary loader is loading, and it's loading the binary version of BASIC that we wrote up here. And again, we have progress information, and as we watch this go by, it will be done in about um, four and a half minutes as opposed to 12 and a half to 13 minutes as opposed to 35 minutes on paper tape. So all the way down to under five minutes like on the Altair 8800. And this really wasn't something a hobbyist could not have done. It was within the realm of doing by hand um, and typing in the numbers for it. Now it was a few extra bytes to put in this feedback, but I like having that feedback in there. It's, uh, it's worth it. All right, we'll do a video cut and come back when this is finishing up. All right, we're on the home stretch, just getting to 1C100. Now, one thing that the, uh, the Altair 8800 loader uh, implemented was a jump record. And I put that in here as well. So this will actually jump to the start of BASIC for us once it loads. So that's another nice little feature. There we go, it's running already. Stop the cassette. Memory size, let it size it. Terminal width, use the default. Yes, use those. So here's our sign on. We have 9,600 bytes free. The KCACR means that it's uh, the Kansas City audio cassette recorder. Um, this is the cassette version of BASIC. So it's basically the exact same thing as the one from paper tape, except it adds C save and C load commands. So I can actually load off of cassette by giving it a name. For example, I have the chase program on here. Now all it cares about is the first letter of the C. Let me fast forward this to the program. And now you can go off and you can load a program. Now this program is fairly large. It takes about a minute, 15, minute and a half to load. But of course you could also save programs with a C save command. So we'll come back here in just a second when this is done. All right, so that's finished loading. Um, as you can see, I ended up having to reset the machine, jump back into basic and run it again. Basically I started the tape at 120 on the tape counter instead of 110 where it actually was. So. Still a difficult science, not near as easy as using uh, uh, disk and floppy disk in a file system still. All right, so this is a fairly large program. And if you've watched some of my Southwest Technical Products videos, I've demonstrated this program in several of those because it's, it's almost like a little benchmark um, because it takes a good bit of execution to set up the game board to begin with. So this, this game basically is a maze that you have to work through with electrified fences and walls and enemies coming to get you. Um, let's give it a random number. And this process right here is when it's generating that table. Lots of random numbers to generate here. And we use this as a benchmark to compare computers and compare basics in that Southwest Technical Video demonstration. So that delay was fairly long. And that again is because this 680 runs at half of the normal speed. And then as it renders this game table, it also draws it a little bit slower than an Altair 8800 or the Southwest Technical 680, 6800, because those are running at full speed as well. So this draw rate, it's having to compute and look things up, it's a bit slow. But unless you were comparing them side by side, you probably wouldn't really notice that uh, it was slow. I'm about to get killed. There we go. Um, so anyway, there you go. We're up and running with BASIC. We've got the time down from 35 minutes on paper tape to 12 and a half, 13 minutes with cassette. And just a couple changes that we did, hobbyists could have done. We're down to under five minutes, just like the 8800 now. So not too bad. Not as good as disk, but we're doing pretty good. So this machine ends up being fairly usable as a basic machine once we have this cassette going with it.